and welcome to another edition of uh, the Art of Learning Small Town Business. Thanks for being with us, Tom Eaglehoff, your uh, business consultant. And today uh, we're going to continue on with our business plan. Uh, we're going to do the last part of the business plan, the executive summary. And if this is your first time here, welcome. We're glad to have you along with us. Uh, the uh, other parts of the business plan are all in the description below. All the videos are in the description below. So if you missed any of them or if uh, there are any that, uh, you know, you want to review again or whatever, uh, they're all in the description below. So uh, we hope that you will uh, go through those and uh, write a business plan. But uh, today, of course, we want to talk about the executive summary. And we want to talk about how to write an e a winning executive summary in six easy steps. Uh, six easy steps are what we're going to do. And uh, should be pretty simple to, uh, to do. Well, not really, but <laughs> I'll make it sound that way. How about that? All right. Uh, the uh, parts of the business plan, as I mentioned, uh, all of the uh, various things we've covered, all the videos are in the description below. But as you see, the executive summary is the number one thing, but uh, we want to do that last because we can't write a summary of what we have if we haven't created the plan. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, today, we're gonna uh, uh, put all the parts of the business plan into the executive summary because if you're going to get a business loan from someone, that is gonna be the thing that they're going to look at uh, the first thing they're going to read is the executive summary and the executive summary is going to tell them do I need to read further or not so uh, the executive summary is very important and that's why we do the business plan first because we've got to pick out the parts of the business plan to put in the executive summary that will uh, inspire someone to um, lend us money or invest or give us a loan or whatever we're trying to do with our small business. So to begin with, uh, one of the things that we have to start with, if I can get it up here, <laughs> um, we've, uh, we need a hook. Uh, we need a hook. And what is that? Well, uh, what, <laughs> what we're looking for uh, is something uh, in the first couple of sentences that's going to grab the person. They're, it's going to grab them and they're going to uh, read further. So that's the thing that we need. So we need to have something in that first uh, one or two sentences that are really going to make people uh, sit up and take notice. And uh, if, uh, if you looked at my introductory video to this channel, uh, you'll see my hook is right at the beginning. Uh, my hook is um, pick up a map of any uh, small town or any uh, state or any country, and you'll see that small towns dwarf big cities. So the, my niche, my hook is that I deal with small businesses in small towns and rural communities. And uh, you know, the big, uh, uh, big, big businesses in Los Angeles, New York, need not apply. So that was my hook in uh, my business plan for starting this channel. And uh, so what you need to do is what is going to make your business unique? What do you need to really put out there that is really going to uh, let people know uh, what you're all about? So, uh, yeah, it's very, uh, very important. Uh, the other thing, of course, uh, were my books. Uh, put my books in there as well uh, to let people know that... Uh, uh, I have, uh, I've, I've written books on the subject, so uh, that adds to my expertise, uh, expertise rather, <laughs> easier for me to say, huh? But uh, yeah, so all these things are essential. So anyway, that was step one is the hook. Uh, step two that we need to talk about is the company description and the summary, um, summer, or uh, rather company description summary. We're going to summarize uh, what the company is. Uh, we need to list who the people are. We need to list uh, what is involved with the um, uh, creation of the company, uh, what you plan to do, uh, but we've got to be brief. Uh, your executive summary is only going to be about one to, one to two pages. 
um, they are not going to sit down and read uh, five or six pages of your executive summary. So it's got to be brief. It's got to uh, uh, really grab the person reading it. And so we started out with a hook. We moved to um, the company description and what that's going to look like. And the next thing that we need to do, step three from our uh, business plan that we already have incorporated and, and have written uh, is going to be, uh, we need in step three, a brief market analysis. In other words, we need to show that we have looked at the market that we're gonna be selling in or operating in, whether it's uh, your city, county, state, USA, whatever. Uh, whether you're a startup, whether you're a established business or whatever, whichever one you are, we're going to be talking about that. And the market, um, uh, the market analysis says that you've looked at the market and you have the facts to back up that uh, this business will work in the existing market. And uh, in your uh, additional documents, you'll show market research that you've done. But we will, all we want to do in the executive summary is to let people know that's there. And if they want further proof of it, you've got the facts to back it up that X number of people buy X number of products in, a, you know, whatever the population of your market is. Next, we, we have to uh, talk about your products and services. This one's pretty easy because uh, a, you know, the more unique you can make your product or the more unique your services are, the uh, better this is going to be. Um, you know, if you say, well, I'm a mechanic, how do I make a mechanic uh, unique? Uh, well, depending on what you what you work on, uh, what, <clears throat> what's your specialty, excuse me, what, uh, uh, you know, what do you specialize in that maybe other mechanics in your market do not? So very important that we um, identify the products and services. And again, we have to be brief on this. And I know this is hard because, you know, you're sitting down there. Uh, what I do is I go through the business plan and what I'll do is copy and paste some thoughts from the business plan that stick out to me uh, in the market research, in the uh, products and services, whatever, and then assemble those together to create the, um, uh, the executive summary. So next we've got to talk about the financials, uh, the information and uh, projections that you're, what are you going to do? Um, how you, how is the business going to make money? And again, a lot of this is going to be your financial projections are going to be what are called the appendees or the additional documents that you're going to include in your business plan that you've done the financials. Uh, you know what a hardware store does in the first year, first three years. You know what a bakery does, what an auto mechanic does, carpet layer, landscaper, uh, whatever, your, whatever your business plan is. Those figures are available. And at the end of the video here, I'll uh, tell you how to get those. And also we'll give you additional tips at the end of the video too, as to what to include and what not to include in your uh, executive summary. Next, uh, future plans uh, for the investment. Uh, what are you going to do with the money? How are you going to spend the, uh, the money? How is that going to work exactly? Uh, you need to kind of, uh, you don't need to document every dollar, but you might, uh, you might say a certain percentage would be on equipment, a certain percentage would be on operating costs, a certain percentage would be on personnel expenses, employees, um, you know, and other things like that. So um, very, uh, uh, very uh, easy uh, to do because you've got all this laid out uh, anyway. Uh, before we get to the tips, um, I want to uh, do a couple things here. One is uh, very important. Um, if, you, if it's your first time here, we'd, li we'd love to have you subscribe as a subscriber. Uh, click the subscribe button down in the corner of, uh, of the video down below and um, Hey, um, you know, ring the notification bell. You'll be notified every time we have a, a new podcast up. And leave a comment and like us. Uh, Facebook like or Facebook, <laughs> YouTube likes that kind of stuff. <laughs> Forget where I'm where I'm uh, broadcasting to. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, YouTube likes that stuff. They put a lot of weight in likes and comments and things like that. And subscribers, of course. So uh, by all means, uh, it would be a great help to us and to you because we're here to help you. And, uh, you know, that's the whole reason uh, we put these videos on is to help your small town business be successful. So and we hope that will uh, will work out. And uh, let's see, uh, well, we did the six points. So now, uh, as promised, uh, we want to talk about a, uh, some additional tips for you that uh, will help you with your business plan. Because we, uh, we want to make sure that what we include uh, in the plan is, is uh, you know, it makes us uh, look good. <laughs> but we also want to make sure that we don't put things in the business plan that don't belong there. So, or in the executive summary, I should say. So tip number one, we got, we've got to be brief and we've got to be concise. Mark Twain supposedly said, I would have written you a shorter letter, but I didn't have the time. Yeah. So you need to, as I said, you could pull out phrases from the business plan, assemble them all together, and then work on making them shorter. Make on working the points shorter if you can, but not lose their their uh, punch, uh, their effectiveness. So we need to do that. Uh, let's see, step number two, um, it's better readership with bullet points. So anywhere that you can use bullet points, for example, we talked earlier about what are you gonna do with the money? Well, a bullet point might be a certain percentage to uh, employee cost. A certain percentage might be to uh, uh, business operating costs. Uh, another one might be to uh, equipment needed or things like that. So those can be those can be bullet points that will make your uh, executive summary easier to read for the uh, person who's who's doing it. Next, we need the next tip: uh, who's reading it? You might have to write several uh, executive summaries for your business plan, depending on who's reading it. For example, if it's going to a banker. Uh, you're going to you're going to do certain things in the executive summary that you might not do if it's going to uh, your rich uncle who uh, you've talked to about maybe uh, investing uh, startup costs in your uh, business or your parents or uh, you know a, uh, a an investor uh, whoever it happens to be. So you might uh, you might need to submit your business plan to various entities. But what you want to make sure is that you write your executive summary uh, to speaking to the person that's uh, that you're going to give that uh, to. So really important uh, to do that. Uh, we mentioned before, be unique. Um, how can you be unique? Um, what makes your business different? Uh, you're a different person. You're not like the auto mechanic down the street. You're not like the carpet layer. You're not like the landscaper. You're not like the bakery. So what makes you unique? What makes your business unique? Uh, we need to stress that in the executive summary to keep them reading. We want to find out, oh, you're, you do this. I want to find out more. So keep it going. Keep the, uh, you know, you have to be uh, unique. Next, get a test reader. Okay, so who are you going to share this plan with? Who, who do you trust? That should be the thing I guess I should I should say the best test reader you can get is the small business development center your small business development center they are prepaid with your tax dollars and they are usually with a university but not always and there's a link in the description below how you can find your nearest small business development center they create business plans for businesses. They will help you create your business plan. So, and they will read your business plan and make suggestions, make improvements, uh, maybe make additions to it, things you didn't think of. The other thing we've got to be very conscious of here is grammar and punctuation. Now, I'm no expert on grammar and punctuation, trust me. So, absolutely, uh, have someone who knows grammar, knows punctuation, uh, knows uh, you know the jargon that bankers want to hear, and all of that. So it's very important to uh, get yourself a test reader. And as I say, the uh, the uh, small business development center is down below. 
Uh, there's also some sample business plans at the SBA, the Small Business Administration. Their link's in the description below. And you can also submit your uh, business plan to uh, members of SCORE. Uh, those are folks who are retired but have been in the business that you're in. And you can contact them, the description's below, and uh, you can uh, run your business plan and your executive summary past them. And uh, all of these people, uh, one of the conditions of their employment, and uh, in the case of the volunteers at SCORE, uh, is discretion. They, they aren't out to copy your business or take it away from you. So uh, they are the best people in, uh, that I can possibly recommend to you that uh, to read your executive summary and your business plan. All right, let's talk about some things to avoid because there are <laughs> there are several in there. Uh, one of the things that we need to uh, that we need to avoid certainly um, is uh, don't focus so much on the investment. Um, you know, we we want the we want the business to shine, not uh, not not the money, uh, not what you're asking for in the money. We want the we want to put the business on display. Uh, the, what you're really trying to do with this executive summary is you're trying to get an interview with a banker, an investor, whoever, uh, whoever you're writing this plan to, um, uh, in most cases, you're writing a business plan to get some money from someone. So who are we writing that to? And we want to make sure that we highlight the business and we, we want to mention the money, how much we need, and in the financial part that I talked about earlier, the percentages for employees and all that, et cetera, that it's very important that you put that in there. But the real financials are going to be in the financial section. So we don't have to focus on the financials and the investment right from the top. Uh, executive summary isn't marketing, isn't marketing material. It should be straightforward and clear. And by all means, don't put anything in it that you can't back up with fact. There has to be a study, a market survey, um, uh, an article, a uh, uh, expertise from somewhere. Uh, you, you can't go in and have pie in the sky. Uh, that's just that's just not going to uh, uh, that's not going to work. So make sure that uh, everything that you uh, Make sure that everything that you have in your uh, executive summary uh, that you can back up with facts. So a couple of final thoughts uh, on writing your executive summary. As I mentioned, it needs to be short, page, page or two at the best. Use bullet points. Make sure you have someone read it before you submit it. Uh, a friend of mine, Jeff, here in uh, Bozeman, turned down by 11 banks to start a small sandwich pastry shop restaurant. 11 banks turned him down. Every time he was turned down, he revised his plan, made, uh, made more uh, market research, more proof that the business would work. And finally, the 12th bank said, yes, he now has four locations of uh, the, the restaurants. But that's what it takes when you're an entrepreneur uh, you will not be denied, and uh, we certainly want you to be successful. That's why we have these plans uh, and why we uh, do these videos. And I want to make sure you remember uh, all the points of the business plan are in the description below. So all of the uh, all the various sections, uh, we've got a video on each one. So go go down and check those out. Also, the Small Business Development Center, uh, the Small Business Administration uh, link is down there. Score.org is down there, and uh, use those resources. They, there's no sense reinventing the wheel. These folks can help you uh, organize your material, get it right, and get it ready to submit to whoever you're going to submit it to because they know how to do it. And uh, they also have the ratios of what a hardware store should do, what a landscaper should do, what a mechanic should do, bakery, nail salon, whatever it is, whatever business you're, you're planning to do, they have the expertise to make those projections for you, back them up with facts, 
and they will help you immensely in getting the loan for your small business so you can start being successful. And that's what we want. We want you to be great. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this one. And we'll see you in the next video. Hey, don't forget to subscribe, ring the notification bell, and leave a comment. You like? Uh, would you like more videos on business plans? Or what other topics uh, should we cover on this channel? Let me know. We'll see you on the next video.